Here's a problem where an astronaut's standing on a planet, and we're given the mass of the astronaut, radius of the planet, and then this looks different, the density of the planet in grams per cubic centimeter, and we want to find the force of gravity on the astronaut when he's on the surface. And so we start out with Newton's law of gravity, and we know big G, and we know M, and we know R, but what is the mass? It's not given. Well, density should be a clue. Grams per cubic centimeter. We know density is mass over volume. You should know that. And so I can solve for the mass if I know the volume of a sphere. And so that's 4 thirds pi r cubed. That would be given to you on a test. And so the mass is the density times the volume. And so it's rho, that's the symbol for density, times the volume of a sphere. And so let's put that into our force of gravity equation. And so instead of m, we have rho times the volume. And notice if you wait to put your numbers in, the r's cancel here. So I end up with g rho 4 thirds pi times this 1 r m. And so that would save you some time. And so we have to be careful here, though. Our density was given in grams per cubic centimeter. Should be able to convert that. One kilogram equals 1,000 grams. So if I divide by 1,000, I have kilograms per cubic centimeter. And then to get rid of the cubic centimeters, I need to multiply by 100 centimeters over, uh, is equal to one meter cubed. And so it's really multiplying by 100 cubed. And so that gets rid of the centimeters cubed. And I get 7,000 kilograms per cubic meter. That sounds high, but um, a cubic meter is a big chunk of material. So the force of gravity is G times the density in kilogram meters cubed, 4 thirds pi, and that's the radius of the planet, mass of the astronaut, 880 newtons. Uh, this is less than his weight would be on the surface of Earth. You could check that. Uh, this planet is a lot denser than Earth, but it's smaller too. And so it turned out gravity was not the same as Earth. Uh, what about this? The astronaut wants to explore not the outside of the planet, but into the planet. So he's going to drill down into the planet very deep. And now he's at the bottom of this hole. What is the force of gravity on him at the bottom of the hole? And keep in mind, this is not the scale. Obviously, if the hole is 1.6 times 10 to the 6 meters deep, the astronaut is just a tiny speck on the bottom of the hole here. And so we're going to assume uniform density, meaning the density of the planet doesn't increase as you go down. That's not a good assumption, but you could uh, alter your assumptions here and, and add complexity uh, if you wanted to. But let's assume it's uniform. That's hard enough. Same density, same radius of the planet. And so to do this, we need to know Newton's shell theorem. And so what Newton said is only the material below you uh, has a net force of gravity. This material is pulling on the astronaut at the bottom of the hole, but if you add up the contributions of all that material, the net force is zero. So the astronaut's standing here, um, the gravity of the material above him pulls up, but the net force of all the gravity below pulling down cancels that out. So we only need gravity from this interior volume here. And so we call the mass of this part M prime, and the radius of this part, r prime, where r prime is measured from the center of the planet to the bottom of the hole. And so we know mass is density times volume, and this time it's the volume of that inner sphere. And we know the density from before. You might take a moment to see if you can verify that 7 grams per cubic centimeter is 7 times 10 to the third kilograms per meter cubed. And we need to figure out r prime. We have the depth of the hole, so they gave me this. And I need to figure out this. So it would be the hole radius r minus the depth. So r prime is 1.4 times 10 to the 6. So the force of gravity now is g times m prime times m over r prime squared. And so the r primes divide out, leaving 1 behind. And I change things a little bit, put the r at the end, we'll see why later, partly because I'm just a pyro. And now the force of gravity is big G, 4 thirds, pyro, m, r prime, 
411 newtons. And so there's less gravity down here at the bottom of the hole, net, net force of gravity, than on the surface. Uh, what if he kept going? What if he kept tunneling all the way through? So now we're going to dig a hole all the way through the planet, and the astronaut's going to jump into the hole. What do you think is going to happen? Pause it and think about it. Okay, we're back. Did you think about it? Did you figure out he's going to fall, right? But then he's just going to keep going to the other side, and he's going to come back and forth. He's going to oscillate. Maybe that looks a lot like a mass on a spring. And it turns out it is. So that's what we're going to take a look at. And so first, let's figure out the force of gravity on the astronaut at any position R prime, which we pretty much already did in the last example. So just real quickly here, there's the density. Force of gravity we know is G times M, which was density times volume, except it's the volume of whatever R prime we choose uh, the volume of that sphere. And so we get the same result we had before. And so this is the force of gravity as a function of R. What if we graph that? Force of gravity as a function of R inside the planet is linear. It's just Y equals M X. So it's a straight line. So it's not an inverse square when you're inside the planet. And the slope is g 4 thirds pi rho m. And we know for simple harmonic motion, we need a restoring force equal, uh, that's proportional to the displacement. And so when the astronaut is moving back this way, gravity is pulling him back with a force that's proportional to how far he is from the center. That's exactly what we need for simple harmonic motion. And so let's see if we can develop the period of this motion. And so in general, for simple harmonic motion, it's 2 pi square root of the inertia over the force constant, where the force constant is the slope of your force distance graph. And so that's the equation for period. And so the inertia of the astronaut is just m. It's a straight line motion. And the slope we figured out was this. And we could bring the 3 up above. And so we get the period is 2 pi times square root of 3 g4 pi rho. And that's that many seconds or 75 minutes. Interesting enough, that would also be the circular orbit speed uh, at the surface. And so if you launched a satellite here at the same time the astronaut jumped in, the astronaut would come back when the satellite made it around. Interesting trivia. Uh, there's another way to get the period from simple harmonic motion. The acceleration is the angular uh, frequency squared times the displacement. And the acceleration would be the force of gravity over the mass. That equals omega squared, and the displacement instead of x is r. And we got the force of gravity from up here. And so the m goes. And so omega would be the square root of g for pi rho over 3. And we know omega is 2 pi over the period. Solve this for the period, and you get the same thing we had here. And so this is a simple harmonic motion system. You might go back and look over some of your other simple harmonic motion system as, as a review here. Uh, but we are done. Thanks for watching.